Hello, good afternoon. Um, hi, so welcome to today's webinar. My name is uh, Dr. Antonio Paluca. I work for 3M as a senior specialist. Um, my specialization is in structural adhesives. So it's just um, coming to one minute past 12 by my watch. I'm just going to give it uh, one, one more minute. So we'll probably start at 12.03 to give people a chance to get their sandwiches for their lunch, etc. So we, we will be back in, in touch um, when we're going to start officially in two minutes. Thank you. I look forward to it. Thank you. Okay, um, good afternoon again and welcome. My name is Dr. Antonio Paluca, Senior Specialist working for the 3 Industrial Business Group. It's my pleasure today to welcome you to this webinar. So thank you for dialing in in your lunch hour. I do appreciate that. Hopefully this will be of interest. So the topic today is adhesive, adhesive technology, um, enabling advances in automotive repair and light wasting. So really, I'll be talking about adhesive bonding as an enabling technology for creating lightweight structures, um, in automotive structures, by facilitating the use of lighter, lighter materials, whether it's new materials, new technology materials, or existing material and lighter gauge. This in turn, of course, requires new thinking and methodology for using adhesive bonding to create new structures in AOEMs. Um, then your repair strategy and the repairing of these structures will, will require new thinking and methodology for actual crash repairs. So today's talk will link, we'll try and link those, those two often separate worlds of AOEM, specification and design, and what it is about these technologies is particularly um, attractive for this modern world of multi-material assembly um, design, and also for the practical aspects of, of repair. Of course, most material structures are here today, and adhesive bonding is an important part of these modern structures. And I think with the drive towards light weighting and electrification, electric vehicles, this will only continue to grow. So just to quickly go through the... Um, Sorry about that, technical, first technical hitch. Um, just to go through the contents of the um, presentation. So we're gonna talk about the evolution very briefly um, uh, in, the, in the context of today's time uh, of hybrid structures and why welding really is not enough. Um, that will hopefully lead into the advantage of these is why they're particularly suited to, to enable this transformation of multi-material assembly and to facilitate light weighting how that can then link into crash resistant body repairs. And I'm going to you know, briefly mention a new product that Frame has launched very recently um, in, this, in this space. Then moving to multiple material joining at light weighting in terms of some, what are the key 
parameters to consider from a design perspective. And then maybe a, a nod to the future. What will what could the future hold for for assemblies and um, body and white structures? So I think just have found an increasingly a uh, wide range of applications in automotive, um, both structures and also in general, in general assembly. And there's been a clear evolution from traditional applications where, which were, if you go back um, to, you know, to the 1940s and 50s and 60s, were predominantly interior applications. Then as you move through uh, the 70s, 80s, um, and into the 90s, it became uh, much more relevant for hemp flanges and in metal, metal joints for welding it wasn't it was unfeasible to, to today's progressive application where really it's in all aspects of the vehicle structure uh, where structural joining of vehicle bodies to improve rigidity durability and crash performance with weld bonding or rib bonding and indeed also now structural or easy bonding on its own and this has kind of progressed for a number of reasons, but the big driver has been weight reduction. There's been lots of studies out there. I'm not going to talk about that today in any great detail, but there's lots of studies out there showing the direct link between weight loss in a vehicle and improved fuel economy and CO2 emissions. And this has kind of driven this whole um, area of using your adhesives in automotive applications. Of course, there's also the consideration for design and performance. Uh, which is kind of, I guess, spearheaded by Formula One. Uh, but that, and that's, you know, so those drivers are actually becoming more prevalent in, in, in general automotive road, road cars. So why is welding no longer enough for automotive manufacturing or repair? Well, essentially, body structures have evolved um, from mild steel shells mounted onto a mild steel frame. Very simple to weld that together into more complex, um, lighter, stronger unibody constructions using a variety of mixed materials from conventional steel to high strength steel. Um, people are now looking at investigating the use of boron steels, obviously aluminium, magnesium composites. Um, and these materials bring you different properties and in combination allow you to create some really quite impressively rigid and stiff lightweight structures. Of course, with this comes complex geometries and assembly order of operation and access constraints. And of course, in, in any business, um, cost quality, pr productivity is extremely important. So the old paradigms, I think, have gone forever. And of course, this is going to be accelerated by electrification. Electric vehicles will bring more challenges in this area. So welding is not enough. So how can adhesives help save weight in automotive applications? I think um, there is a natural in, in, uh, interaction with different with different uh, reasons for this. There's a different um, multi multifaceted um, aspects to weight saving, and adhesives can come into play with down gauging because you're um, not putting so much uh, localized stresses on the joints. You can potentially elimination of reinforcements um, with efficient joining, integral sealing, changing materials to aluminium or multi material. And of course, this all leads to improved design flexibility. So, this interwoven map um, is, is sort of basically what I'm saying there's not one but reason, there's a number of reasons. And that's why it's, I think it's become particularly attractive. It's not one dimensional. And, and, and the use has been proliferated over the last um, 30 to 40 years since proving technology. We've certainly got a history in automotive leases that stretches back to the 1950s. So it's been around and it's going to increase. I think part of the reason for that increase in usage is, is the kind of plethora of advantages it can bring within the context of an automotive structure. So bonding and sealing simultaneously, reducing galvanic corrosion, enabling the use of magnesium, aluminium, aluminium and steel. Uh, it certainly helps to have a, an adhesive layer in between the similar materials and similar metals. Bonding the similar materials, obviously, 
um, you can't weld um, a composite to an aluminium frame, for example. Um, so, and, yeah, and moving down to some of the ones at the bottom, uniform stress distribution. Bonded joints can often be stronger um, than riveted joints and spot welded joints in particular because of the distribution of load over a wider area. And of course, in the modern idiom of using composites, um, the ability to get full gaps is particularly useful because tolerances um, in modern constructions are typically wider than they were uh, when welding steel frames was, was the norm. So huge, again, uh, multidimensional facets of, uh, of advantages or properties that enable um, this multi-material um, structures to exist. So if you look at um, the modern consideration of a vehicle, um, I think with its performance, it's the right level of performance facilitated by the right materials in the right place. Um, virtually every OEM that we speak to has this kind of thinking. And that's also facilitated in the changes of the materials used in the construction of these structures. Now, this is a McKinsey report that came out a couple of years ago, and I think it's already out of date. And this is kind of reflected the pace of change. So if you consider 2010, as they did when this report was written a few years ago, and the switch to the actual structure and the materials used in those structures, I think 2030 is probably here today already in 2018. It's kind of crazy. Certainly very close to 2030. And I think they've also got the use of aluminium wrong. I think aluminium will be higher than 12%. This is just my own personal view, not a 3M view. I think aluminium will be definitely into the 20% range, probably even 30, because of its recyclability. But I guess the over overarching message of this is correct in that it's a multi-material present and future. And, and of course, that has advantage in terms of if you can actually put the material you want in a part of the structure, in theory, you can actually save money as well. So it's optimizing design and saving money, you know, productivity ratio. And if you look at what AOMs are currently doing um, in, the in, the, in the manufacture of the, the structure, not only the structures, but the completed car, it's, it's multiple joining methods. There's complexity now. Um, these are just some of the methods that are currently used. It's not an exhaustive list. So there is a wide variety of different methodologies to try and facilitate um, the assembly of these complex structures. I would argue that in the future, this needs to be simplified to reduce cost and complexity. And quite honestly, I think right now, an easy bonding could replace all, all, if not most of those, if the design was optimized, of course. So I think going to the future, people are looking to take complexity and cost out of structures. And an easy bonding is a great facilitator for that. Of course, it is currently used in hybrid bonding. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about it in a second. I just wanted to talk about, uh, very briefly touch on strategies to optimize joint performance in our sports structures. Um, it says strength here, but I think performance is a better word. Um, because if you look at additional, certainly a repair scenario, additional attachment of, you know, if you put more spot welds, you can increase joint strength. But there's actually a limit to, it, to the number of spots that you can actually be added, both in, new, in the new car and also a repaired car, or repaired structure even. And there's a whole reason for additional spot welds, uh, not necessarily a good idea in terms of cost, weight, Increasing the tack time, cycle time, and often it um, creates other issues in terms of um, spacing and design parameters. But of course, I think it's easiest for joint design can dramatically increase strength, but also these can also help manage stresses in structures, especially if you're combining different materials. So this idea of strength is only one part of it. These has actually helped to increase um, stiffness as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you're using adhesives, 
if you're designing with adhesives, it's essential to know how they work. And I think adhesives do work in different ways to, um, to actual mechanical joints. They, they, they respond to certain stresses in design. I'm not going to talk about design too much in this presentation. There's other webinars that I've done in the past or, or, or come and talk to us if you want more information about design. But essentially, these work better in, under certain stress considerations, typically tensile and compression and shear. But this is more about um, the tools you have when using an adhesive. You can actually predetermine the reaction to load. So, so if you apply certain stress, how will the adhesive joint um, respond to that stress? So the modulus, so effectively, adhesives are available in a whole wide range of moduli from extremely low to several megapascals to several gigapascals. And for joint design and also joint repair, this is a real um, useful factor to have at your disposal. This is something that you can actually um, play tunes with in terms of getting the right match to your particular repair, or indeed if you're designing a joint uh, structure from the start. Especially relevant where you have dissimilar materials that, are, that perhaps are a different uh, stiffness, and particularly suitable for multiple material assembly. And of course, the idiom is designed for these joints. You get a much better solution if you can design for the joints at the beginning of the process. For repair, that's not so straightforward because uh, you're dealing with a fixed um, situation. But you still have the advantage of having the ability to choose adhesives with very different mechanical properties. So if, these are two, two examples of the extreme. The one on the right. Uh, DP760 uh, is a um, um, cold curing two component epoxy that you know, has a um, tensile stress of 45 megapascals. I think this was a world record, it might still be, for a cold curing um, 2K epoxy, but very low elongation, so it's extremely strong, very stiff adhesive. The adhesive on the left, uh, DP620S, used extensively for composite panel bonding. So as you can see here, there's an interesting stress strain curve where the elastic limit is around 10, 10 megapascals. So it's, it's just structurally strong, 10 megapascals. But under high, under high strain conditions or under extreme conditions, it will, it, will, it, will, it will harden, it will become tougher, it will become stronger. And it's um, particularly good under high strain rate conditions. It's why it's used for all sorts of applications as well, because there's a lot of energy absorption. And of course, toughness is the area under the stress strain curve. So, so you can see here from these two extreme examples, you have the ability to fine tune um, the adhesive properties, mechanical properties. And you know, every, every picture does tell a story. Modern adhesives can combine high strength and energy absorption and other, other combinations as well. So you have this ability to either absorb load or transfer loads in structures or in joints. Again, this is a big advantage for using different materials. Just quickly touch on, on this, which is um, design data. If you're doing LS Dyna, if you're doing, I think even in repairs, I, I've seen some repair companies now use modeling. It's not obviously not nowhere near as prevalent as it is for new build. But just to be aware, if you are a repairer or you're looking to get into repairing um, structures, um, there are tools available that can help you determine how um, how a structure will react to load uh, from a design perspective. And of course, the companies or AOEMs will use things like LS Diner, etc. Companies like 3M, we have all the data you need to actually look at a, a joint from a first principle. Just want to mention that. And you know, if you look at the history of um, uh, where vehicles are and where 3M has been with automotive structures. We really, I think we're, 3M has been involved right at the start. It all, it all stemmed really from aerospace, and from high-end Formula One cars, and it's flown from from that into the modern hybrid constructions that we see today. And I think the, mo the modern approach is to combine high toughness, so it has to have, have a high toughness core, and are these the same structure? Uh, so it's basically, as I mentioned earlier, that you have the ability to go from 
to face the ball with that feeling, to higher strength, to tough, to crash resistant, impact resistant product. And I think the enable, it's easy to enable this and enable the use of multi materials to facilitate this design. And the current situation, I think, used across a lot of vehicles is hybrid joining. So, as you know, it covers both weld bonding and rivet bonding. And hybrid joining is really, as, it, as the name suggests, is a simple process of using an adhesive um, or a sealer in conjunction with a spot attachment, typically um, SBR or a spot weld, or even sometimes um, a screw. And these, and, these, and these hybrid joints are kind of the current state of the art, you know, they provide instant fixturing um, and a combination of the strengths of the adhesive and the mechanical fixture. Um, so they're, they're, they're kind of current state of the art. But of course, there's an increase in drive to moving away from hybrids to just using adhesives as well, which we'll talk a little bit about in, in a few minutes. So I want to switch tax slightly now on to um, particular focus of impact resistant structural adhesive locations. So we take a, if you, if you take a structure, there'll be certain areas of that structure which will be will facilitate the need to have um, um, what we call true structural bonding or crash resistant bonding. So these will typically be you know the crumple zones at the front, uh, frame rails, pillars, strut towers, wheel housings, floor pans, even cant rails. There's a number of examples in being on the design of the vehicle where you'll need impact resistance. Of course, when you're designing from scratch, that's great. But if you're repairing a structure like this, then what product do you use? How do you repair this kind of structure? Well, Frame has very recently launched, in the last um, 18 months or so, launched exciting product, um, uh, 7333, and it's equivalent in different packaging, 57333. So it's a new structural repair that's been developed under the in, co in collaboration with an AOEM. I think this is the first time this has been done, uh, working directly with AOEM. So it's a room temperature curing epoxy that has the prerequisite requirements of shear, peel, and impact strength for use in true structural joints. These are joints where you need crash resistance. Uh, so it's not a replacement for panel bonding. So it's very clearly this is specifically an impact structural repair adhesive. So it has, so if, you, if you delve down into it, it's very high fracture toughness, which is one of the properties that defines the impact resistance. And if you need the full details of this product, uh, we can provide all the technical information. I didn't want to include that today. <clears throat> but we have obviously all the, all the data to support this product. Uh, so key things, often to get true fracture toughness, often will involve a heat cycle and with an adhesive. This does not. So as is mentioned here, it can be an advantage of some of the existing products that are out there today. And this has advantages in terms of robustness, in terms of speed and flexibility in how you actually do the repair. You can heat the product, but you can also use it without heat. So it's a major advantage for repairers. Some of the features and benefits. Um, it does have a, a color change in chemistry. This is something that 3M um, does a lot in its products for automotive. We have a, an equivalent product to this um, in, in AO for AO, which is typically used by AOEMs, which is SA9820. Again, that's a sort of fracture toughened, um, crash resistant product for AOEM use, uh, which changes from red and yellow to orange. This is a similar chemistry changes from silver to purple so people know it's been mixed correctly uh, when they see the purple and as it cures of course so this gives them um, a visual standard work procedure i know a lot of repair shops now are going into visual standards 5s plus one keep keeping in step with aoems so this is very much part of helping the repair shops keep track and keep in progress with what the aoems are doing it's a very very good product Uh, just in case you were wondering about um, areas for impact resistant. So uh, we mentioned earlier hybrid joints, rib bonding and weld bonding. 
So crash energy management structures, this is kind of the pieces of the vehicle responsible for managing the energy from the crash away from the passenger. This is a very good development that was done many years ago now. Uh, I think um, we've learned from some of the designs of the 50s. So in the last 30 to 40 years, most cars have been created with um, this energy management system and, and embodying white structures as well. Um, so it's, it's for these particular areas of the vehicle where um, on the left-hand side is particularly useful, is that this new and easy for repairs. Uh, uh, and you know, if you look at the actual what OEMs do, um, I, I can't think of an OEM today that is not using some kind of stru uh, structural adhesive in the generation of its, uh, one of its body and white uh, platforms. Um, so that's very well specified. If you look at um, the repair procedures for those structures, I think it's definitely paying ca catch up. Uh, I know in the UK we've recently worked with JLR to create a specification for repair, and globally 3M um, is involved with virtually all the major OEMs to try to work um, a suitable repair strategy and specification for repair of these vital um, structural components. So if you have a need for this, or you have any issues with this, please contact us and we can help. Okay, so I'm gonna change that uh, track slightly. There's one more slide on this. So just to kind of wrap up on sort of repairs and so some of the more commonly bonded applications for adhesives and repair scenarios are shown here. Uh, just to give you a flavor, it's not all structural. I mean, door repairs, though interestingly, some, some German OEMs are now beginning to see closures as part of as needing to be impact resistant and fully structurally bonded. Traditionally, um, closures uh, were not impact resistant zones in terms of fracture toughness. So it seems to be switched away from that depending on, on the AOEM. So, yeah, so as a generalization, these are some of the other structures here. Okay, so I think just to wrap up on this, we, we have um, gone through a journey of looking at um, looking at these as, as enablers. We've looked at some of the design factors, some of the drivers, uh, we've looked at linking you know, crash resistant areas in OEMs, repairs. And if you take a look at you know, the evolving hybrid structures, which involves uh, multi-materials in terms of including composites, FRAM um, has an exceptionally wide portfolio, not only for structural bonding, but also semi-structural bonding. I guess the reason for this is Next generation lightweight materials lend themselves to easy bonding. We've talked about some of the advantages earlier. So just summarizing some of the material choices here. Obviously, you've got high strength steel, boron steel, but there's a whole plethora of other materials. Some of these will not be used in structures, uh, but in, in, in panels and semi-structural applications as well. And even in these applications, um, the, the, you'll find stress gradients if you combine different materials. And this is uh, composites being one example. So this is an area where these really um, shine and the ability, giving you the ability to manage stress. So we talked about that earlier with a you know, wide range of modulus as well. So uh, moving on from this, if you look at our portfolio um, for bonding, um, composite or structural hybrid structures, you're not going to read that. It's not meant to be read, but what it's meant to show is the vast uh, range of products that we have um, across the uh, across the various uh, frame. And sometimes you, you lose track of just how many products we have to help you design or solve a problem. It's only when I started to start to list them down, you begin to realize um, how we can help different customers at different stages. And and this is a, a, a graphic that I do like because it kind of shows the areas that we work in pictorially rather by product. And it also brings in, this is a schematic, so it's not directly related. So it kind of shows on the right the different stiffness and the modulus that you can choose from with adhesives. So from very high, high strength, high stiffness to um, strong, tough, 
<clears throat> to strong flexible to very flexible gap filling and, and overlay on that is the actual different chemistries as well so this is something that frame understands it understands hybrid and multi-material bonding and of course in automotive some of these are some other important aspects fast e-jigging which we'll talk a little bit about in a second no read through if you're using thin gauge materials that's very important and of course in automotive mineral service prep core compatibility etc so come and talk to us if you've got a problem or you want to design something so we talked about read through um, this is an area that's close to my heart um, this is kind of a mo modern world problem of using thinner lighting materials which is great for saving the planet in terms of co2 emissions and reduce cost for the end users so read through on, on, on the a surface is can be an issue for them understand this so we have products and we have methodologies that will enable you to overcome these issues so we understand how to look for it in the lab we also have some practical tips on how to solve this so one example here is actually to use one of our acrylic form tapes as a primer onto the sensitive a surface so if you're doing a repair and you're wondering how to do it come on talk through because this is, these are the things that the AOEMs use. So we can help you with read through. And we can help you with cycle time. One of the big things in automotive, of course, is cycle time, tack time. <coughs> and fast EG is very, very important. Now, uh, if you're doing repairs, um, so one of the things that we do um, for AOEMs, actually, is, is use a combined domain bonder with a secondary chemical spot cure almost like a chemical weld. So we have tapes that can do that. We also have super fast adhesives that can give you handling strength in less than a minute. Products like 55045, et cetera. So we can, that works for both original build and repair. We also have, I think we're probably world leaders in the induction cure chemistry for um, structural two component epoxy adhesives. Um, so it may not be ideal for repairs, but certainly for a new build AOEMs, it's a particularly good technique for getting fast lockup. And we're talking seconds, several megapascal in seconds. And of course, the traditional methodology used today, which is well bonding or with bonding. So cycle time optimization, something that we understand and we know it's a big thing in automotive for, for our customers. So again, come and talk to us. Okay, I'm starting to wrap up now. So I'm going to talk about a couple of um, um, things that are close to my heart as a scientist working in this area. So we do, we, I do a lot of multi-material and composite bonding. And so if, you do, if you're using composites or multi-materials, the tolerances are not the same as they were when it was old fashioned steel to steel welding. There generally is a gap in modern construction, especially on panel bonding if you are using a composite, the gap can be two, three millimeters. So adhesives are particularly good for that. But what's interesting here is I've got four adhesives list of four frame adhesives. And they're listed on the graphs in decreasing order of strength. Um, but if you, so if you were doing the traditional bonding at thin bond gaps, 0.25, they're clearly differentiated in strength, overlap shear strength. You make the joint bigger, the gap gets narrower. So that's an interesting um, observation. And if you look, but if you look at the bond energies, so the amount of energy is absorbed by these adhesives, as the bond gap gets bigger, it's flipped. So the lower modulus products are becoming increasingly important for semi-structural bonding. So very in particular, again, composite multi-material bonding. And also where substrate failure is not an option, uh, there's, a, there's a modern paradigm where the adhesive can be used to, to control stresses and actually be at the point of failure in extreme situations like a crash or a high impact situation. So again, we understand this. Come and talk to us if you're doing design or repairs. Now this is another one of my favorite subjects is fatigue. Um, modern adhesives are engineering materials. This is one of the best changes I've seen in my working life when I started doing my PhD several years ago now. 
Uh, the, these are now seen as engineering materials. And as such, these are, these are the bonded joints can be um, can be tested to um, uh, effectively modelled for fatigue performance. Um, so giving our customers uh, real insight into life cycle data. Um, so this is done. So this is a capability that 3M has internally. Um, we have extensive knowledge on fatigue testing. So if you're concerned about that or you want to know more about that, again, come and talk to us. The question I have, though, because um, I work a lot with AOEMs, is how much is this prevalent in repaired structures? Has anyone ever actually tested their repaired structure in fatigue? Um, I don't know what the answer to that is, but I do know is that 3M are going to be looking at this in the coming um, months as, as dedicated projects. So if anyone is interested in that, again, come and talk to us. I think this whole area of fatigue is exactly where I want my needs to be because it's a way of predicting life cycle performance. It's a way of predicting, um, giving confidence to, the, to the, our customers and to their customers. And I think this is how a technology becomes established by giving people confidence. Okay, definitely starting to wrap up that last couple of slides. I just briefly wanted to mention outsource assemblies. Um, this may not be particularly relevant to repair scenarios, but certainly for AOEMs, uh, we understand the world of outsourced assemblies is becoming more and more important. People will be making certain parts of the car, they, they maybe the tailgate or certain components off site, um, off the main line, cam banding, whatever it may be. So, again, this is where I think an easy technology is particularly useful because it allows parts to be bonded offline and maybe, and maybe shipped in as needed several weeks later. Um, penultimate slide, I think. Um, just wanted to mention light weighting as from a big 3M perspective. Uh, it's always good to see the bigger picture. And 3M is a, a, a multifaceted technology company. Uh, so we don't just make it easy and tapes. So we have a whole range of technologies from thin chillet, micro advocated insulation to our glass bubble technology. So we're, we're, we're thinking of the big picture when it comes to light weighting. And of course, these forms part of this picture. And I think it's really exciting. Come and work with them. It's a really exciting time to to be involved in this area, I think, for we can really make, make a real difference to the design and weight loss of vehicle structures. Because this is a picture of a car. It could be a truck. It could be, it could even be a train. So, so we have really, exciting technology that can enable light weighting. Okay, so last two slides. I just wanted to mention the future. So today's paradigm is weld, weld bonding or rift bonding. How about the elimination of spot welds? The elimination of SBRs and just purely relying on the adhesive? Is that fantasy? And the use of two component structure adhesives to eliminate spot welds and bond brackets room temperature cure, or maybe very localized spot curing to lock components together. I think this is something that this is something that 3M is definitely considering. We're working on this. We know a lot of our customers, we talked about the complexities, I showed a slide of maybe six or seven different joining technologies um, earlier. So I think there's, there's complexity to be reduced. Elimination of wells saves money, um, and it gives you increased design flexibility. So that's a challenge I've put down for ourselves and also for our customers. Um, but of course, every challenge, every opportunity has a challenge. The challenge of eliminating, uh, one challenge of eliminating spot loads, of course, is performance. Performance during e court in particular. So there's some issues to be overcome. Uh, but we know that OEMs uh, in particular have seen the potential to revolutionize the manufacturing process bringing um, new materials to remove body and white ovens. And of course, this, is, this, this whole talk has been talking about compatibility of mixed body structures um, and looking to, to, to really push the envelope as indeed, as indeed our, the consumers are with their embrace of electric vehicles. So this whole space is changing. I think we're, we're at a crossroads at the moment and I think I can see a real interesting future for adhesives. And again, we're pushing the boundaries in terms of um, 
fixture lists and easy bonding, true structural bonding. Okay, that's my glimpse of the future. Um, I think I've probably talked enough now, it's probably half an hour. So thank you very much for listening. It's for me, it's been a pleasure, absolute pleasure to talk about this subject, subject close to my heart. So I'd like to thank you very much for listening and uh, sharing your lunch hour with me. And um, I think we've got a few minutes for questions. So one of my colleagues here is pointing uh, her laptop at me. So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions now. So the first question that's coming is what will be the biggest challenges for bonding solutions in regards to electric vehicles? Wow, and the benefits. Okay, so that's a, a, a small subject. Uh, I think, um, so the challenges regarding bonding solutions to electric vehicles. Well, I, I, I would flip that on its head to start with. Is that if you don't use adhesive bonding, how are you going to facilitate the, the battery packs, the batteries themselves? How do you incorporate those heavy, bulky batteries into a body structure. I think an easy bonding can help you with the battery trace, for example, the enclosure of the actual batteries themselves. It can help with the um, actual assembly of the batteries themselves, the actual pouches or whatever technology you're using. And it can also potentially, I think, help you lightweight the structure because most batteries that I've seen are upwards of six, 700 kilograms per vehicle, which is a huge amount of weight to add to any structure. So you probably have to make the structure stiffer as well. So if you have to make the structure stiffer, there's nothing better than a, a well-chosen, well-designed and easy bond to do that. So maybe this person who asked this question can come and talk to us um, separately, send us an email, because it's a big, it's a big topic for, for a question on debate. So thanks for that question. So there are a few other questions, but maybe we can do those offline. Um, so what I'd like to say now is one, one last call for any other questions. I've got one, one more minute, perhaps. No, there doesn't seem to be any coming in. So with that, I'd like to say thank you very much. You still have an opportunity to um, um, answer, answer the um, ask any questions. Or you can contact me directly or come through the usual channels of 3M. I um, hope you enjoyed today's webinar. Uh, I think this will be, has been recorded and will probably be available on YouTube and various other 3M channels um, within the next couple of weeks. Um, and also, 3M has a regular series of webinars, so please stay tuned for those in the future. In the meantime, I'd like to say thank you very much for listening. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, thank you and goodbye.